relationship where someone says, I have an existing site and I have a way of making money for you. Let me be an agent. No. No. There are no agent relationships. Now, the reason for this is, is clear because an agency is the thin edge of the wedge in creating a private bank. And in fact, it is through the concept of agents of trade that the parasites corrupted every single civilization for thousands of years. Every single civilization for thousands of years. Now, given limited time and given the limited real estate, it is difficult to explain to you the abundance of history that can prove to you the truth of these words. But there are many documents that can prove the truth of the words I just said. I'm merely demonstrating to you that we go beyond the argument that it is wrong, that it shouldn't happen, to the fact it is now considered a serious crime. I have one more to show you, and then we need to keep moving on. And I need to explain to you the relevance of this. I want to show you one more, which is Article 145, Offences Involving Precious Metals and Stones. Okay. Offences Involving Precious Metals and Stones. So here, under the Criminal Code, we say that it is an offence in the use of precious and metals and stones of currency as, as a currency or underwriting of money when a significant quantity of precious metals and stones are used in the effective possession of one party, either directly or indirectly as collateral and underwriting for the issuance of currency or equivalent negotiable instruments. Now, we qualify under point one of primary facts that everyone has rights to have jewellery. Jewellery, sentimental value, heirlooms, all of those things are perfectly reasonable. We're not talking about that. What which, and people have, for a matter of safety, purchased gold and silver. That's great. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. What we're saying is that gold and precious jewels and metals are and have been used as a manipulator by the same parasites that run the bank in order to reset their system when the systems of greed, corruption and cruelty are out of control, as they are at the moment. When the system can no longer, when the beasts can no longer be reined in, they collapse it and they collapse it by using their gold stores and their precious metal stores and they reset it. And the way they reset it, they reset it by saying, lawful money will save you. Now, they do this every 70 to 80 years and have been doing this every 70 to 80 years for at least 500 years they have done this on record. At least we can track it. I believe they've been doing it way back to the time of Julius Kaiser they've been doing it, which is the money system's out of control, the loan system's out of control, lawful money will save you. And that's exactly what they've been doing in many parts of the truth movement, funding, supporting, cajoling and encouraging the promotion of the idea that gold is good, that gold will save us. Well, who controls the gold? They do. And does anyone in their right mind truly believe that, that people who have used this tool over and over and over again to stay in power and the evidence is overwhelming they are the same people that control the banks, suddenly have seen the light? Of course not. The use of precious metals and stones as underwriting or direct money is a serious crime under Eucadia. Not only is it spiritually rendered worthless under the covenant, but it is considered a serious crime. Now, why have I spent the last few minutes going through these things? And I know that for some, they think, well, this is not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about court. I want to talk about court issues. This money sounds great, but why? Well, because, because there is no mechanisms of interest. Because credit is not created out of thin air. All credit is properly managed and has provenance in history. Because 
the system cannot be corrupted by its very nature. The law is the most important protector of that system. And without the clarity of the law, there would be, without question, the early corruption, an attempt of early corruption of what I've described to you. There will be people who say, hey, I'm going to try and find a way of getting a million sovereign credits somehow, some way. And that would be corrupting the system. So the frustration is it has taken a long time to think through the mechanisms that over history have been used to corrupt currency. It's been a long time in planning to get to here. But the exciting thing is with these foundations, I am confident that when the button is pressed and the communities are encouraged to trade and share in the sovereign credit currencies that we have described, it is a system that will be extremely difficult to corrupt and that your hard-earned value will be extremely difficult to be taken from you. In fact, at the end of the day, the only way it will ultimately be able to be taken from you is if you allow the law to be corrupted. Because it will be for you and for those that follow you that determine the success of this. So that's why I showed you these, because these foundations are critical. Well, that's money, and there's a lot more to go with it. And of course, money as a means of exchange is an essential component in the conduct uh, of a community and in, in the reason for a community. Now, one thing is the currency and the operation of the currency. Another is the products of it. Another is the pricing mechanism. And another is the markets of it. Now, in terms of pricing markets, it really, again, comes to the importance of structuring the right community models. And as, again, frustrating as it has been for me, the insights that have been coming in the last, well, every week now, but in the last, uh, certainly in the last five months, has seen the importance of structuring uh, charters and the way that we view the different elements of the society much clearer. Now, on the America's Union site we're on, if you want to see some of the important progress of this, just click on the map there of the two Americas, or three Americas, and what you'll see is the Charter of the America's Union. Now, these charters are still being updated, and these charters are being perfected. But when you open this up, what you'll see, which I introduced last week, is more clarity in terms of the definition of the unions, and then underneath the universities, then underneath the provinces, and underneath the campuses. It is no good for us to simply set up societies in the hope that if we build a society and we trade and communicate with one another, that we can be left alone. What we do, we do yes for ourselves, yes for our family, yes for our community, but also for the future. As I've said before, and as I'm sure you're all aware, well aware, the change of a government, the change of a regime, can happen in days. The only reason that Saddam, I was going to say Saddam Hussein, the only reason that Gaddafi is still in power is that it suits a number of important Western powers to see him remain in power. Most significantly, the United States, and aided, aided by expert pilots, by military by paramilitary and intelligence officers of Israel. This is happening right now and supported by powers of Europe. That's why Gaddafi is going to stay in power because they want him to stay in power and they're using every single resource possible to keep him in power. But even with that, there's a prospect that he will eventually be tossed out. So regimes can change in days and in weeks. The problem has always been what replaces the system. The exciting thing is these things are coming together. Now the market mechanism and the pricing mechanism, when you have been when you've registered, when you've redeemed your, your trust number, 
you've been given a password. And we'll re be reissuing those again to you one to one. But those passwords are important because online the markets will be turned on and part of promoting your local community will be the abil ability to log on and start to advertise and post and communicate and share that energy. Now the energy has value. And so we'll be promoting that. The workbenches have been developed. The back systems have been developed. But the refinement of the law is absolutely vital because once you start on this, as I'm sure you'd all agree, once we start on this, none of us want to stop and restart again. That would be a credibility issue. And certainly no, no one wants to start and find that there are massive loopholes that allow people to corrupt and potentially take your energy. That would be terrible. To make sure that this does not happen, to make sure that the system can run as efficiently as possible, this kind of work in terms of the charters and law has needed a bit more time. So thank you for your patience on that. With the time left, I want to talk quickly about the courts. And I don't know if we'll have time to talk about on-ground support, but I want to talk particularly about an issue was raised about where people need help on IDs and uh, people who have started to offer, if you like, services where they may be charging a fee. I will cover that before we finish because that is an important issue. But I want to talk about courts for a moment. If you go on to how to succeed at court on one-heaven.org and have a look at the examples. If you haven't already seen, you will see on that page at the top a link that should take you to the executor letter, even though the executor section is not ready. So what am I referring to? If you go to one-heaven.org and on the home page click on the brown box how to succeed at court, and you go down to the second last link, court examples. When you call it up, you'll see a box with a yellow stripe saying download executor letter. If you click on that, you should get the executor letter. Now, this is the letter that I described last week in terms of responding after 14 days after you've received a summons. And the reason I've put it up now is that a number of you are faced that situation and a number of you may be facing that situation. But it also reinforces a point that over the weeks is sometimes lost in talking about court matters. And I know court matters is one of the most important and relevant things for many of you. And some may have left the chat simply because Court is the thing that they wanted to hear about, not money. The reason that we are doing these things, apart from remedy, and the, the power of what we're doing, is that every single cause of action into a Roman court of Western law is founded on the sacrament of penance. Every single cause of action. Now, the judges may not know that. The bar may not know that. The prosecutors may not know that. But it is a fact, an immutable fact, that every single cause of action is the perfection of the sacrament of penance. And as a sacrament of penance, it is you who are confessing, not them. And you must confess freely. And there is only two ways that they can argue that the sacrament of confession has been perfected. First is the act of contrition, and secondly is the act of absolution. And that is by you in honour confessing, or by your dishonour and your delinquency being used as your confession. Now, if the courts followed their own laws, if the judges followed their own laws, if the bar was still following their own laws, much of what we talk about would be irrelevant because most of you, if not all of you, would find some form of remedy. The fact is 
the bar has stopped 